I'm really live? All right. Hey, this is Brooke from Printerbot.com. We're on Printerbot Live. It's 440. Partly, uh, I'm to blame for this. And by part, I mean all to blame. I got here a little late, and then when Dave tried, we had some kind of app issue to hook this up. So sorry I'm late. It's 440, and we are starting. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> it's been an okay weekend. I, I worked a lot this weekend. We're still playing a little bit of a catch-up with all the chaos. Uh, in the shop and whatnot, but it's starting to feel normal. Um, anyway, so thank those of you out there that are patient, which maybe it's only a few, <laughs> thanks for being patient. Uh, one thing that I've realized, I was just before when I was eating lunch, I was thinking about what do I want to tell you people? And one thing I want to tell you people is don't listen to me. Uh, that's one of the things. When I say I'm going to have this done on this date, I am. Uh, it's so, it's like a public thing that I have to go through to have people realize that I say it with good intentions, but it doesn't always happen. So I'll stop apologizing and check this out. This is what I've been working on. I've got uh, the Adoptabot that we're going to reveal today. I've got the model, and I'll even release the files today for those brave enough to like get their hands on it. But understand, uh, I think there's some through holes some hole sizing that I'm going to have to change. So there'll be some light changes tomorrow, but then it'll be done. But I'm going to release them tonight for you people that have just been, come on, please let me build this thing. So I'll show you that. It's all put together right over here. But first, I want to show you about two other projects that I've been working on. Number one is finally finalizing the prosthetic uh, printer. We changed the back case, so uh, we got to finish that up. And that'll be done finally. But this is another project for the prosthetic folks, and they were looking for, if I leave it right there, Dave, is that, can you see it? Do I need to tilt up or down? Back or straight? Like this? I'll go like that. Can you see that? I can turn it more towards the camera if that helps. All right. So uh, this is, the prosthetic is, uh, what is it, 10 by 10 by 14, roughly? Um, and so that's really good for legs. Well, in uh, what's the country? Um, can't remember. Do you know, Dave, the country where we're going to be sending this? The hospital? Nepal. Nepal. I had to remind myself. There's a hospital in Nepal that has put thousands and thousands and thousands of um, prosthetic, uh, and they make them out of bamboo, all kinds of stuff. But they're going to be receiving. Um, this printer, the first one that, there's like three I'm going to make. Uh, one for Jeff, who does the prosthetic. Uh, one for a guy named Matt, uh, who also does some work with prosthetics in the third world. And then one, that one that's going to Jeff is going to go to Nepal. And then I'll keep one. But this is basically, when you, have a, when you design a printer for the third world, all I'm, all I'm trying to describe is it doesn't really matter uh, the difference between something for the USA and, and something for a clinic in you know the far reaches of some hard to reach place in another country. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You have to be able to airship that, and you need to be able to maybe have a different build envelope. But you, we were kind of stripping the prosthetic bot down all the way to bare minimums, keeping everything very simple. So extruded frame. And I'm going to have this done at FazTech, and it, they're doing it as a kit. So I'm just going to order all of this stuff here. In fact, Brian Rowe, thank you very much, Brian Rowe, is helping me. He's done this joinery before, and I haven't. So he offered to help, but you'll see this disappear. You see all of that? That's the extruded aluminum, and we're using FazTech. I found them on Amazon, and they're a really great company. You should check them out. It's uh, basically, it is standard, you know, English units, not millimeter. Um, but they're a USA company, and they're really great. They can mill. They have all these crazy connectors, and they can mill stuff for you and cut it to length. So it saves me a lot of time because I don't know how many. I may only build three. I don't know. But I thought this would be really cool if somebody wants to provide their own extrusion, change the dimensions. Again, I want to show how, how minimal this is without the frame. So I've seen a lot of... Uh, the bots done with extruded aluminum frame, and it just got to me eventually that there are so many designs out there, and it's not that I think one design is the best design. Um, as long as they print well, I don't care. 
and people are having fun and designing and learning skills, and that's all great. But I kept asking myself, because I've built several of these as well. I built, I mean, going back six years almost, five years, I built this crazy one, and it's actually out there in the wild somewhere. Um, I've done all kinds of different things with disease, experimenting, like, what's a good way to, to do the bed? And with, with this prosthetic, I finally just, you know, kind of got on board with everybody that was doing the dropping Z, and I thought, okay, that'll work. So the dimensions of this are actually, I'll do a top view. Whoops. I'd rather you, let's see, it's a little bit weird for me to do this backwards. Okay. So the printable area here is actually 12 inches by 18 inches by the Z is 2 feet. So it's going to be one foot, one and a half foot by two feet. And so that is what they needed in Nepal to be able to do some larger things besides just legs, like uh, the prosthetic printer is doing, um, back braces and some other things for, uh, that just need a larger build area. So this is about as minimal as we can make it. It actually uses the, I'll look underneath here, those heat beds aren't correct, but it uses those belt loops that we use on, uh, it's not a loop really, it's, it's, uh, it looks like a loop. But it's a straight belt, you know, a long length belt. And it winds around the three edges. So it's not H-Bot, it's not, uh, it's Cartesian, essentially. But it's as simple as you can get with the hardware. It's just very, very, very basic. It's the same thing we're using in the printer belt. So we've, we've got the X and Y in the printer belt, exactly the same. So I don't know what I'll call this, but uh, eventually um, this and the printer belt, and if we like it, we may trickle this down to uh, the prosthetic, who knows. But I like using the same parts over and over, learning from what you've built with one, and then dragging that over to another. So this Model 3, because it's the third version of the, the prosthetic that we kind of really branched off on. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this, the XY is very basic. It all mounts to a plate. It's linear rails. Um, but look at the Z on this. I don't know if you can tell. But the Z is actually independent. It just bolts to the rails. Um, the motor for the Z, this is kind of different for, our, uh, for me showing drawings for our show here. I don't see it. Maybe I accidentally hit it. What you don't see is the Z motor actually is on top of the top plate. So when you don't have to worry about aesthetics and you're trying to flat pack everything, make it easy to assemble a couple of sub assemblies, the XY will be sub assembled. You know, I'll put it together and then pack it. The Z will be all the way, except for the bed and the stuff that bolts onto the carriages, that will be independent, you can take it, it stays the right width the part, the rails. So anyway, kind of a neat approach, something that's totally different, I wanted to show you that. Now the next thing I wanted to show you was the printer belt. You can see that it looks much the same. This is a drawing. Back here, Dave, can you see this? Okay. I don't know if you can zoom in at all. I'm waiting to see it on the thing, is it not working? Oh, it is already. Okay. Anyway, I'm debating on whether or not to remove this little piece of plastic here, but we're going to start cutting this tomorrow. And don't believe me when I say anything, right, on time length. <laughs> but uh, the, the big impact that had here is we were using, I was incorporating this um, power supply. This isn't even accurate in this drawing. I must have an older version. But we did have a power supply trying to tuck it in underneath, and we're just not going to do that. Uh, we don't want to, I was really getting bogged down trying to fit everything underneath not going to do that. No power supply, so the power supply will be external. And that will give me a lot more room to do what I want to do here. So anyway, I have been working on that, but not much. Tomorrow's cut day. Uh, it was pretty much done. I'm just trying to find time. And then finally, the adopt bot So I may need that drawing. I don't know. But right now, I want you to see this cute little guy. This is the adopt bot model. So, like I said, I'll, I'll publish the files, and those of you that download understand that we are printing on a 0.5 millimeter tip with 0.5 layer heights. That's how we, uh, 
no, that's not 0.5. Maybe it's 0.3. Anyway, we do it on our fast uh, setup when we're prototyping. So it over-extrudes a little bit on the edges. So we're going to recommend a 0.4 tip and 0.2 layer height so it'll look really pretty. Um, we want to make sure the holes are good in the drawing for everybody. So you can see the theme uh, going back from the junior, the simple, or let's see, the junior, I may have gave, the, I think I've gave, given that away. And then the, the simple, the original simple little guy that ended up being called the simple maker's kit had the same orientation like this. And then all the way up to the smalls and the pro and like, I just like this. I've been obsessed with this from the get-go because you can zoom in real tight on this, Dave, um, as tight as you can, and I'll wa I can see the screen a little bit, so I'll stay right here. And the reason I like this orientation is I, from going back from my Kickstarter in SketchUp, is what is the perfect way to have the smallest printer possible? Um, the orientation of Z going up here, X coming out front, E obviously has to go that way, but uh, this is just the, the tightest little design job I can do, and I've been working on this a lot, a lot, a lot, because there's a couple of interesting restraints, constraints, that I had to, to go through to make sure this thing is small. Now, first, first disclaimer, it's all plastic. That's the first constraint. It's all plastic, so except for the bars and the bearings, it is plastic, and the motors, and the wires, and the electronics, and the bed. Okay, so there's a lot of metal, but it's not like a traditional bot that I would do using a lot of metal fabrication. It's just this bed, and am I still within the, sc the screen frame here? Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't even have, uh, what was I going to say? Normally, you'd, you'd see support underneath this, this frame, but it's got the bars like that. So this is kind of neat. Several features. First off, um, I want to show you how small it goes down to. It looks really small when it's all the way down. This is the first full version of this that I've printed. I printed sub-assemblies and put them together to make sure they work. But I'm getting a little, I'm seeing a little bit of wobble in this, so usually on your first try, you realize you've got s something wrong, <laughs> and then you got to go back. So yeah, I may have hit something. Anyway, so uh, this is really tight orientation for the four motors. They're all very close together, and what that helps is on this, with the electronics so close, you can you can save wire. Now the wire is going to come off the side here and go right down to where it needs to go. Right now I'm mocking it up with the Smalls wire kit, but we'll probably go even smaller with this. So I've got to decide all this tonight. Because look, that's, believe it or not, that's the Smalls uh, wire for the hot end. But let's go way out here. There we go. So if that was tied off here. Of course, we've got to go up now. Anyway, it's roughly 100 by 100 millimeters on X and Y, and we're not quite to 100 on Z. I'm kind of just settling in to about 90 or 80, 80 to 90 on Z because uh, beginners don't typically uh, print in the whole volume, um, but I'm hoping to get 100. I know that these bars can get... 100 millimeters. So that's 4 by 4 by 4 inches, roughly. And like I said, it might be 4 by 4 by 3 and a half. But again, when it, you're doing a printer with very tight constraints, all plastic rep wrap and least amount of parts, you want it to be small. And I'm okay if beginners only have access to a little bit of room. And this would actually, I could just see this fit really nicely on a student's desk. And it will fit in a backpack. Okay. So you can see that the wire from a Smalls is really too long by about, what is that, 8 inches? So we're going to have to cut down or make some wire that's even smaller. So really small, really thin, very cute. Since it's 100% plastic, 
uh, you'll be able to take these files and design stuff you don't like. And there may be stuff you don't like because to be able to build this printer, this is the other constraint, on this build volume, so all of these parts can print on here. Um, that's hard to do, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, one, of the, one of the caveats is I, I had to go uh, more than 100 millimeters from here to here. So we've got this little cap on the back. You can't see it. You might see the crease there. It's actually two pieces. It's a little cap that comes onto the back. So anyway, I wanted you to see that. I'll publish the files. You guys can mess around with it, critique them, find flaws in it, tell me what to fix. Uh, obviously, it's not real until it prints, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print tonight. I was so close. I thought I was going to have this running for the show, but I couldn't. So the adopt -a that's the big deal. And can we ah, it's too dark out there, isn't it? It's pretty dark. Uh, I will tell you that the Adoptabots, uh, now that the files are done, published tonight, I'll have my wire links. We do the wire tomorrow, and we can ship, start shipping tomorrow. Uh, we've got 50 boxes out there with motors and hot ends and extruders. Uh, what, what else? Laptop supplies. We've got to put the electronics in. But we're doing all 50 at once, finally. And we'll try to get those shipped tomorrow, at least some of them, because 50 is a lot. And Dave's got a gig. So anyway, uh, that's the Adoptabot. So if you guys have questions, um, I just wanted to show you what my week entailed. I've been drawing and I've been printing. And we're ready to release this. Oh, check out this feature. I forgot about this. This Dave said he liked. So there's just a couple of thumb screws here. You can take that bed right off. Now, what's nice about that is if you don't want to use a sensor, I don't have the sensor mounted on here. I forgot that part. It goes right there. Um, if you don't want to use the sensor and you want to use an end stop, this could be a piece of glass, a piece of wood, a piece of plastic. Uh, it could be, I'm wanting to do a little spring, little flexible spring plate. You could use acrylic or polycarbonate. Uh, it's really a PLA only. Um, printer because it's for beginners but I like that and the reason I like this is because you know right now the width of it well arguably you're gonna have to get this in your bag too so it's this long but with that off I think it'll go in the in the backpack a little easier there's two screws here you can just take that whole thing off and then it's pretty pretty thin so if you need to travel with it I'll even demonstrate <laughs> This is just, I don't know if I can get it with my hands. Yep, I can. I'm taking the belt tensioner off. There. And then this will come apart. Woo, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> now I'd have to cut my belt. I wish the other side would have come off there. So you can see that fits in a backpack easier than with the bed sticking out like this. So very small. Fun. Do we have any questions, Dave? Don't have to. Oh, yeah. Give me some. Do you mind uh, just reading them? I'm going to put this back together while you're reading. Still, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, if we, if we, uh, you can skip questions that we've got. Like Dave knows I haven't touched that because it's such a low priority, based uh, when you compare it. Um, you know, projects are always after products, and uh, customers come first. So yeah, I put those off. Oh yeah. All right, so um, several things. I did want to talk about the Adopt-a-Bot program, and that does lead me to one little piece of news with the Bot Spa. So here's the deal. Um, Bot Spa, it's really kind of fallen off lately to being very few people use the Bot Spa. So if you have heard me talk before about my company, when something doesn't sell, I kill it. But I don't really want to, I don't want to kill the opportunity for somebody to get their bot tuned up. So... I will say it like this. As a business, 
um, the bot spa as a, as a part of our business, the bot spa is going to go away just because it, there's not many people doing it. And it starts to be, it hurts our workflow. Um, everything we do, we need to do a lot of it at a time. And when there's just one at a time, we're not really set up to be, you know, like, hey, call us and we'll troubleshoot on the phone and we'll figure out what's going on. We'll send emails back and forth. The bot spa was cool when uh, we were getting more people using it, but um, not a lot of people using it right now. So it's going to go away. And here's how I would love for it to go down. The uh, Adopt-A-Bot is, we have quite a list of builders that uh, are good at troubleshooting. Maybe there's somebody out there that wants to get, uh, wants to, I don't know if certified is the right word, but maybe it's blessed <laughs> by PrinterBot. Uh, somebody that would be willing to just open up, a not for me specifically, but for the community, for people that needed bots fixed. But I would love to endorse some uh, trusted builders, some trusted fixers in our community that I would trust to send any customer to so that we can get these bots up and running again. We were refurbing some uh, for, the adopt, for these uh, adopter bots that are going to ship these boxes. Me and Dave were out there. Dave's working on uh, some hot end refurb. We needed like eight other hot ends. And so we were doing that. And we were noticing that some people are just really hard on their printers. I mean, really hard. And so it's not that we've built something that doesn't work. It's just that, you know, printers have wear and tear with some customers more than others. <laughs> and I think uh, that maybe uh, my kids are hard on things. And at least, well, I don't know. I don't know if that's totally true. But, you know, as a kid, I was hard on things. And I wonder if some of it is kids get these printers and they're not really into the maintenance, they're into the using them heavily and they just degrade. So we do need people to reach out to, uh, where should I have them reach out? Probably um, adopt a bot. So let's do this. The people that are already on the, or people that want to participate in this, I am looking for, uh, this is a business. Adopt-a-Bot's a nonprofit, so if there are people that are building or fixing printers to donate to schools, maybe you're one of these guys that I'm talking about, but I'd love to find somebody that I could endorse and send the people that need a bot spa to you, and that would be for profit. I could give, uh, you know, I could work with you on availability of our parts, uh, printer boards and stuff like that, um, if people need things replaced, but... Anyway, if that rings anybody's bell and you'd like to get involved on being one of the guys that fixes things, now it wouldn't be affiliated with PrinterBot. They'd be on their own if they used you. Um, so that's kind of the sticky wicket of the thing. But the big news is it's not that big of a deal because how many bot spots have we had in the last month? Three or four? Yeah, we've only had like three or four in a month. So bot spa might be winding down. <laughs> well, some of our printers are like that. I, I cringe sometimes as a businessman when I meet somebody and they say, hey, I've had your bod for like four years and it just keeps working. I'm like, oh, it's just, oh. But no, that's, that's what I wanted to build, something that works well. And I do think um, anything that has moving parts will break. You know what I'm saying? They're not impervious to damage. Um, you know, and, and some people, come on. Some people uh, are just hard on their stuff. So printer bots aren't indestructible. They're just pretty hardy. But, uh, yeah, looking for somebody that would be willing to kind of take over the bot spot program unofficially. If you've got a business doing that, let me know. Just contact brooke at printerbot.com. You, you, can, you can just email me, and I can talk to you. I'm going to have to definitely make sure I know who you are, what you do, that you're super good at what you do before I send any customers to you. But I know you're out there. All right, what else? Any other questions? Lost? The head printer, the 3 head printer, uh, like the Go, I think is what he's talking about. There it is. Um, the Go was, uh, it was too much to handle. It was three heads. Um, people that ask me that uh, don't typically, um, maybe you're different, whoever's asking this, but people that want to dual head print or triple head print, it's because you haven't tried it. And it sucks. It's hard, 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 hard. 
So if you're one of the guys that love it and do it all the time, even you know it's really hard. Well, two is hard. Three is ridiculous. I never should have made that product. It is ridiculous. We're not there yet. But I have been talking. In fact, I had another phone call with him this week. Um, I always forget their name. Mosaic. Uh, they're out of Canada. And I had a conference with Mitch and uh, a new guy that uh, they, I mean, eventually we'll have, if everything goes well, uh, we'd love to offer the mosaic as an add-on to anything, even this little guy. They have this one one piece of filament that comes in, and they actually splice together different colors. So it doesn't have to be as hard as it is. But they're working really hard on um, the software that it takes to make multicolor printing easy. That software doesn't exist right now. <laughs> it's really hard to multicolor print because the software doesn't really exist, and especially not in the open source. So uh, mosaic, it's proprietary. It's a company that you know has patents and stuff but for users I don't know that a lot of users care if you want a multicolor printer I don't know if you care if it's open source or not the the reason we started this project back here was uh, because I think something should exist in the open source but to try to get the software done in open source that's gonna be hard now Prusa is working on it uh, so you know when we get some software that mere mortals can use, then it'll be a race to do something in the open source for that. But right now, it's not there. So we don't have a two or three head printer because it's just too hard. A couple of adopted questions. questions. Yeah. Um, looks like maybe it's not familiar with the program yet. Oh. Um, he's asking if, there's, if you're going to offer that kit at, like, to non-educators. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, let me, let me explain that because yeah. I am wrestling with that. So here's, here's the deal. So Adopt-A-Bot is really all about the community coming together, volunteering, me donating a lot of stuff, so that schools, educators, um, colleges, whatever, can get a really cheap printer that, you, you know, you can see on a desk at a school as a first time, very low risk, you know, it'd be low risk. So if it's not a lot of money, it's low risk. If it doesn't take up a lot of square footage, it's a low risk. If all these parts are known and really typical and it ends up printing good, <laughs> I'd like to see how it prints, uh, then it's low risk. You don't want to go out and buy a three, a four thousand dollar, you know, two thousand dollar, three thousand dollar MakerBot or Taz or, you know, you don't want to invest a lot, Ultimaker, you don't want to invest a lot of money if you don't really know if 3D printing belongs in your classroom. But kids, I, I believe, are ready to receive this into their you know, their, their schools. So uh, this is low risk. Now, I get it that some people are going to want to do this themselves. It's going to be a very, very small kit, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to have to put it up for sale. It's kind of like a plastic smalls, but even smaller, smallser. But uh, we're going to keep it called the adopt -a bot because I'd rather promote the adopt -a bot than some kind of, I'm not going to make a lot of money on these parts. Um, there's so very few of them. You can buy all this stuff off the shelf. I don't know. That's why I've been struggling, because I don't want it to look like I'm trying to make money off of this little program. All the design time on this, I wasn't dreaming about making money off of like a six-inch bar. I mean, who cares? <laughs> you know? There's nothing proprietary in this. Uh, I was excited about people all over the world printing these for schools or something like this. This is probably just the beginning seed, and uh, the model will change. You guys will find stuff that I, I did that was crazy, and you can do it better. Uh, if given more time and more people vetting this model, it will get better. So I'd rather uh, it, all the credit goes to Adopt-A-Bot and education rather than Print-A-Bot selling a bunch of these. But yeah, it's really easy. It's, it's six, uh, what is it, six inch bars roughly? It's 165 millimeters is what? Well, 152 six inches, right? 152. So it's a little over six inches, six and a quarter, something like that. Um, it's six bars, all the same length, six and a quarter. I do have eight. Uh, you, could, you could survive on, let's see, two, four, six, eight. What am I missing? Ten, twelve. There's twelve. You could probably survive on nine. Uh, but these little bearings off the shelf. It's all push-fit stuff. 
I messed around a lot with uh, like clamping it down, but it's all push fit, so it's not perfect. It's not the perfect bot. It's small and easy to print. <laughs> That's what it is. So yeah, but you know what? I'll make sure we have a little kit with some belt and these bars and this right bed. Otherwise, you can just buy whatever electronics you want to put on it or buy ours. I know the, the wiring is the other issue, huh? So anyway, next question. You're getting me distracted thinking about it. I don't know. For that printer, yep. if you print the parts for it, do you recommend PLA or ABS? I recommend PLA because if it don't work in PLA, then what's the point? Because I don't want to require people to do ABS. Uh, yeah, PLA, some people worry about the heat and all of that, but hey, it's coming into fall. It's nice outside. <laughs> Uh, I would do it in PLA because it's the easiest uh, to print, and this little printer only prints PLA, or at least it doesn't have a heat bed, and I don't intend to make one for it. Um, now, somebody else could easily put a heat bed on the bottom. Nothing in the way. See? So you can take the, like, if I took the length of bars for the smalls, this can go wider, this can go taller, this can go out this way, but plastic parts have limitations. So that's why I just want to keep it small. The expectation's low. People will mod this, and you can do whatever you want. I'm not going to help you, um, as PrinterBot's not going to help you. I want Adoptabot to get uh, to find the best little silver bullet they can to get things rolling for schools. And that's the number one thing. I'm not doing this like my other products where we got all kind of crazy variations. No, it's just we're just going to release the files and call it a day. <laughs> Maybe provide some of these bars if you want. What else? I misunderstood the question about the 3D printer. He was talking about oh. the uh, Escher style. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, so I've got the approval. I went through the process with Escher back at the beginning of the summer, maybe earlier, um, to get vetted by Autodesk. And I had to sign an NDA and the whole thing. So there's formal agreements going on with that. But the guy that, uh, Corey, I think, uh, the guy at, at uh, Autodesk that got that program off the ground. He was very upfront in saying that, you know, this is a test. Can we create a market for printers that print faster by using three heads at once? Um, so I was like, I understand. I'm willing to take a chance and, and make some. And then I got sidetracked. So it's still sitting in my shop. And I still wonder if with the printer belt at 12 by 12 inches, the bigger version, I'm trying to think if it's necessary to have also an Escher. But the cool thing about Escher is it's multiple printers printing at once. So right now the printer belt's one, you know, but it can go very long. The point of Escher isn't to print very long. The point of Escher is to print with 10 printers if you can. So in a manufacturing environment, it's whatever, eight times faster. The printer belt doesn't do that. Now, I did pitch uh, to him in an email. I said, hey, we should make the Escher a, a printer belt style Escher. Yeah, where um, there's multiple heads going and it's all printer belt style. So I'm holding that loosely right now, and I, I got to get printer belt out first. So I put that aside, and it's okay if I've missed the boat on Escher and some other company in the US has probably got one for sale. Uh, I still have the approval to do it, but I need to see what that printer belt is, is going to do before I put a lot of resources on it, because it was a really niche thing. So sorry I misunderstood that earlier. What else you got? Hey, this is our 20th episode. This is awesome. Good job, Dave. Good job yourself. Well, thank you. This is great. I wish I could say it was our 20th week in a row. Almost. I think I missed we, three. I've done 20 about, in less than 25 weeks. Oh, cool. I've probably about 23 weeks. Dave is good for me in this way. He is like this, like clockwork. Like he likes uh, to get things in order and follow through. I'm the opposite. I like to do whatever I feel like doing, whatever I th feel like saying. And so I'm a mess, but he's helped me get this. Yeah, it's cool. So 20 episodes, that's fantastic. Thank you, Dave. Oh, here's, here's another thing that I kind of missed in the shuffle. We missed one of the shows, and I don't know that you guys realize, but our Simple Pro has, you know, it's long arc, that product. <laughs> a lot of hard stuff. We've been trying to find the right price, and I have found it because I'm not going lower. <laughs> it is $6.99, okay? So if you've been looking at the Pro, the Simple Pro, you can see them on the shelves here. 
has the LCD screen, does work with the cloud, with Wi-Fi, and you don't have to know anything about slicing, you just have to point a file at it. And so it's the, I think it's one of the easiest printers, it's the easiest printer I've ever used. But uh, with a phone, you can get it going and print. We, we ought to just do a demo of that sometime. What time is it? It's probably too late to do that now. Yeah. But uh, it is $6.99. That is a great price for that printer because we've also added, uh, this one doesn't have it, but we've got the heated bed. It's a magnetic flex plate that's uh, spring steel that's nickel plated, I believe. And it is nice. It's a nice, nice, nice printer. You can also just uh, plug it into USB and use Windows or Mac or whatever uh, to use that heat bed. We're just on the verge of getting the heat bed working in the cloud as well, because believe it or not, right now the cloud, no heat bed for the cloud, heat bed for USB, but we're trying to make both work. There's complicated things happening there, but we'll make it work. So I'm just excited that we can offer what I think is our best printer at $699, only $100 more than the old Simple. Well, there's sort of one there. That old Simple was a favorite because it was so basic, but believe me, it had flaws, and people would upgrade them and do all kinds of things with them. This Pro, I really don't believe the mechanics have any flaws. It works really well mechanically. Um, we always want to improve the touchscreen and the cloud. Right now, we're focusing on the cloud uh, to make, make the features like tip sizes and uh, heat better not. Um, we need to add those two things in before I feel good moving on to another area. But six ninety nine, Simple Pro. Check it out. Anything else you want to cover? Well, guys, uh, thank you for listening to me ramble about this little guy. Oh, I did want to, I, I did want to say one other thing. Um, I have uh, been getting some emails and kind of watching these groups in Adoptabot. So with Adoptabot, the groups are self-organizing now. Uh, they've chosen leaders, most of them. Uh, they've chosen leaders and they have marching orders. And so very soon with these files, uh, the people printing can start printing. Um, we have these 50 going out very soon so that we can then start working on getting all the parts to the people that are going to make the kits. And this thing will start happening. So it's really going to happen. <laughs> I'm thrilled. Uh, but just thank you guys for um, self-organizing into groups. One I'm excited about, I'm even having a Skype with them. It's a small group, I think three or four guys. But uh, we're Skyping me and uh, these three people, the extruder, the filament team. So we have the vision to do 100% recycled plastic. And Tyler from Philibot has come on board uh, with the... You know, I love what you're doing, Brooke. I want to join. How can we help? We'll do anything we need. So he's sending me an extruder. He's sending me a recycled filament. Um, he's sending me a lot of information. We've been talking on the phone. But I'm going to share that with the extrusion group so that we can get them off the ground. They, there's a, they have a tough one. Uh, we don't need them to be 100% up to uh, speed to start. They're kind of going to join us down the road once they get to master extrusion and recycling. Um, but that's happening. I've got, well, I, I won't go on because it's just from memory, but lots of people are finally organizing. It's starting to get a life beyond just me, which is the exciting part. So anyway, uh, things, things are happening. <sighs> I feel so much better having these files done, man. So you guys have a good week. Um, we'll see you for episode 21 next week, Thursday, 4.30. Thanks for watching. Happy printing. Yeah. <laughs>